Let me ask you if you've ever had one of these days. You know, you wake up, you get up, you're actually kind of excited, you have a lot of things to do, and you went to bed, and you woke up with this list of what you were going to do and how you were going to do it, a battle plan, a strategy to get through the day so that you could accomplish everything you wanted to do because what you wanted to do was important. Ever had a day like that? You got up and you were ready to go, and almost the minute your foot got out of bed and touched the ground, something else happened. Life. Right? Are you with me? Life happened. Kid gets sick. Toilet plugs. Air conditioner doesn't run. The car won't start. I mean, and somebody from Ohio calls you up and says, guess what, I'm in town. Don't you want to spend the day with me? I think that's a common Floridian event. <laughs> and so you, you do all these things. You make all these calls and you attend to all these interruptions and then all of a sudden you look at your watch and it's 5 or 6 or 7 o'clock at night and you come home and you crash into your favorite chair. You're totally exhausted. You haven't had hardly a thing to eat all day and you take out that list and you say, what did I do? I didn't get any of these things done. Have you ever had a day like that? Have you? Yeah. You got nothing done in your mind, and yet you did. And everything you did do needed to get done. It just wasn't in your design, your control. It wasn't on your list. And let's be honest, that troubles us. It troubles me, you know, especially as I get older. I like to know where I'm supposed to be, when I'm supposed to be there, what are the expectations, so I can try to meet the expectations. You know, I, you know as I get older, it becomes harder for me to just kind of run around and do everything. It may be aging, it may just be getting physically tired. I, I don't know, but anyway, I like to know my list. And I like to accomplish the list because the things on my list, at least from my perspective, are important and want, want to get done. They're at least the things I've told myself are important and need to get done. But the truth is, the vast majority of things that happen to us in life are not on our list. They happen, and they are out of our control, which is why faith is so important. Because though the control things, the things we think we can control, get out of control, in some ways that speaks highly of us because we don't like going home at the end of the day and feeling unproductive. We like to feel we got something done. We don't want our lives to be purposeless or meaningless. And so the list is significant. It's not bad. But what I've come to learn over the years is that more often than not, the things that really matter, the things that are really most important are not necessarily the things I put on my list but rather the things that somehow, in many respects, God has placed in my life. Do you remember the story of the Good Samaritan? Raise your hand. Everybody here know the story of the Good Samaritan? The story of the Good Samaritan. Man is traveling the road from Jericho to Jerusalem. Hilly road, rocky road, a lot of crevices and so forth. And he gets robbed and beaten and cast in the side of the road, bloody and near dead. A priest comes by. He's going from Jericho to Jerusalem. A religious man, representative of the church, and he looks at this man and it says he passed on the side of the road and kept on his way. And then a Levite, another religious leader, came and did exactly the same thing. And we read that story and those two individuals have been castigated for years. They've been uh, held up as the epitome of what is wrong with the world. And yet, it's a tough road going from Jericho to Jerusalem. It is all uphill and it is hot and it is muggy and it is nasty. And I got to tell you, if I got things to do, I don't have time for that person. I don't have the energy for that person. Besides... You see, I've been more sympathetic to them in some ways. Besides, if they're on their way from Jericho to Jerusalem, it's highly likely they're going to do what is one of the highest privileges and honors of their office, and that's to participate in the sacrificial offerings at the temple. 
And there were so many priests and, and so forth in that day that they may only get a chance to do that once a year. And if they touch someone who is beaten and bloody, they will be unclean and defiled and not able to participate in that sacrificial offering. You see, they had a list. They had important things to do. They had God's business to be about, at least in their own mind. And we say, well, shame on you. It's obvious what you should have done. And yet, <laughs> don't we do the same thing? I mean, don't we do the same thing that sometimes we see these things over here, but our list, what we think is more important, is what we say we have to be about. Besides, I only have so much time, I have so much energy, it's hot out. Jesus' story reveals what's really important. And we can think, well, it's obvious, you know, you should help the person. But when we think about it in our own lives and we apply it, is it really that obvious and is it that easy to do? Or do we have this other list that is our list that we think is more significant? Let me pose a hypothetical situation to you. If you were me, oh, what a privilege to be me, right? <laughs> If you were me on a Sunday morning and you are responsible for preaching, you are doing what I am doing right now. Okay, we're all clear. And somewhere about 45 minutes ago or 45 minutes before the service begins, you get a call on your cell phone from a family in the church. Husband has had a heart attack, a stroke, and they're certain that he is going to die and they want you to come. Come to the hospital. You look at your watch. You look at the time. There is absolutely no way you can, you can drive to the hospital, spend any time with the family, because you know it's going to be, the time could be endless. You have no idea what that entails, but so there's no way you can go to the hospital, do what you would need to do, and get back and do church. And they don't want anybody else, because it's a life and death situation. But you have an obligation to all of you who are sitting here in the church. What do you do? You can't really send somebody else. They've asked for you. And what will people say if they show up and you're not there? What do you do? Stay or go? I went. Now, you go, but you don't really know, you know, you know, you know there's, there's something that says, you know, what difference can I possibly make? But, but you go, believing that whatever you do, even though it's a severe interruption, in your list, in your schedule, what you're obligated to do, what you think is your responsibility, you go because whatever you offer... God will take and fix and make well, and maybe that is the important thing anyway, that the other is secondary. You see, it puts things in perspective sometimes. Our list, God's list, what we think is important, and what life really says needs to get done. You see, that's what's odd about this parable we're reading this morning. Go back and read it again. Because unlike the parable of the sower, which we are familiar with, we're familiar with the parable of the sower. It says, the man went out and scattered seed. Well, that's the same as this parable. Went out and scattered seed. That's how they planted. They didn't cultivate. They didn't make rows. They just scattered it out there. And that parable in Matthew says, some of the seed fell on hard soil, some of it fell in weedy soil, and some of it fell in good soil. And the good soil created a great harvest. So the focus of that parable is entirely on the soil. But this one is very different. This one says he goes out and he scatters it and he really doesn't understand what's going to happen. Goes home and goes to sleep. You see, this one helps us to focus on the faithfulness of the sower. The faithfulness of the sower who scatters the seed and trusts that no matter whether he understands what will happen or where it will go or what good it will do, God will take it and bring something good from it. Do you see? It's a huge lesson here. There is a huge lesson here because it reminds us that it reminds us that ultimately so much is out of our control and we think we need to control it. And we are not always responsible for all the outcomes 
What we are responsible for is ourselves, our personal commitment, and our responsible effort. And that effort, perhaps especially when seen as an interruption, the, the interruptions in life may be the most important things we're called to do. To stop and to give and to, to intercede, even though it isn't what we thought we were supposed to be about today. You know, people always ask, and sometimes, sometimes they ask it sincerely, and I think sometimes it's almost like an excuse. They, you know, when, when they're asked to give... Uh, time or food or usually money like to some overseas mission project, the first question they say is, how do we know the money gets there? You don't. I mean, ultimately, you don't. I mean, we can do our best to trust and, and to funnel it through channels that we believe in, but ultimately, you don't. But this parable re reminds us that, that our responsibility is to act faithfully to begin with and to pray that God can follow through on that chain and make sure that it does what it is intended to do. That there's a part that you let go, that it cannot inhibit you from doing what you are responsible and accountable for doing, and that's giving your best and trusting that God will use that. You know, the sin is in not doing that. Other people have to be accountable for what they do. You know, week after week, I have the privilege of preaching to this congregation. And sometimes I do an acceptable job and get it right. And other times I'm standing up here and you are either listening or dozing off. And, and uh, I'm thinking to myself, man, this is not going the way it sounded when I wrote it. It sounded really good in my head. Just shoot me. Help me to sit down because this is just not good. Right? But that kind of thinking is all about me. Because then oftentimes I am humbled when I leave and somebody says to me, on my worst days, you know, you said exactly what I needed to hear. You cast the seed, trusting that whatever you do, God will use it. If you offer it in good faith, God will take it in good faith and make something come of it that is unimaginable. And next week I get to do it again. <laughs> you know, I'm reminded it's all in God's hands. My responsibility Sunday after Sunday is to offer my best, recognizing that the other things may be the main things. The other things people hear, maybe not even what I thought I said, are what they needed. And God saw to that. I'm going to close this morning by sharing with you something that was written on Mother Teresa's while at home, at her home in Calcutta. You may have heard it, but I think we need to be reminded of this periodically because sometimes, sometimes, um, I, if you're like me, sometimes I just wonder if anything I do matters. And I just wonder, you know, they're just, you just wonder if it has any value, any worth at all. And you've got to get up the next day and figure out how you're going to face it. But this helps me, and I will share it with you. On her wall is written these words. People are often unreasonable, irrational, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of, of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed Anyway, if you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy in one night. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the best you have, and it will never, ever be enough. Give your best anyway. Because in the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and anyone else anyway.
Amen.